Welcome into Squad Studios. Joining us today from Title Gaming is its chairman, Jeffrey L. Orridge, and its CEO, Charlie Watson. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank for, thanks for having us. Of course, this is uh, this is exciting. I mean, like, uh, we know you guys, but why don't yeah. we dive in and let the people know. Um, Charlie, just want to give us a dive into just your history in esports and everything you've been through, kind yeah. of TLDR over the past little bit. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Title Gaming, and uh, we were Canada's first esports organization called Set the Destroy X 10 years ago. Yeah. And as of Q3 2018, we rebranded to Lazarus Esports. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I've been in the, the industry for close to a decade, and worked with a number of developers and publishers and colleges and oh, universities wow. and you know sure enough we mm. we got connected with uh, with Jeffrey here uh, early 2019 and and uh, yeah I think that's a good way to segue over yeah. to yeah. 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 fresh <laughs> release right here uh, yeah. Jeff you have a really rich history with sports especially so what drew you to Charlie what drew you to eSports yeah I've you know I've been involved in in the business of mm. sport mm. for over three decades now um, and not counting when I used to play sports when I was eight years mm -hmm. old. So, good old days, um, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. When I was much better than I really was. <laughs> but um, no, so I've been involved in, in the business of sport. Everything. When I graduated from law school, mm. I went to work on Wall Street for about three years and did mergers and acquisitions and leverage buyouts and revolving credit credit facilities mm -hmm. and all the things that I never really wanted to do long term. That's a lot of buy, buy, so, buy, sell, sell, sell. Well, no, I'm just saying. But yeah. I was, but I was really fortunate to get involved in professional sports. Mm -hmm. My first job in sport mm -hmm. was with USA Basketball, and mm -hmm. we negotiated with the NBA the first Dream Team deal, and so we put that deal together. And then I went on to work for for Reebok and ran global sports marketing for Reebok, and then on to build a sports brand for Warner Brothers, and then fortunately worked for Momentum Worldwide and handled the Southeast division for mm -hmm. them, and worked with Coca Cola and Delta Airlines on the Olympics. <laughs> okay, I, I, I run out of fingers to count. It's only supposed to be one page, Jeffrey. You know what? I've, I've lived a long time. I'm 84 years old, so that's that's the deal. I crammed a lot in, though. But you also like CFL as well. Like you've got. Yeah, so I moved to Canada. Yeah. So So I'm a dual citizen, and and that allows me both American and Canadian. Yeah. So. I'm allowed to be both arrogant and apologetic <laughs> at the same time. The so dream. Um, exactly. But when I moved to Canada, um, I took on a, a, a role uh, with Right to Play, mm -hmm. which uses sport for for development in 26 countries, and then moved on to uh, to run CBC Sports, so Hockey Night in Canada, the mm -hmm. Olympics, FIFA World Cup, mm -hmm. and uh, and then fortunate enough to be tapped to become commissioner of the Canadian Football League. So did that for a couple of years. So. So long time, long history in sport, yeah. uh, but the business of sport, everything yeah. from media to marketing to licensing, and what attracted me to, to Charlie mm. is um, it's truly the you know esports is the nexus of technology, uh -huh. sport, entertainment, and media. So for me, it was a natural fit. That, that's brilliant. I mean, it's good. As people in esports, it's so great to hear someone so accomplished wanting to dive into mm -hmm. this. I mean, obviously for you, like, what it was it just an instant, like, yeah, like I want to work with this obviously, guy? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I would say yes, probably. <laughs> yeah, you know, when 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 I first uh, met Jeffrey, it, it wasn't just about you know the pedigree and mm -hmm. and you know the 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 track record that he has, but mm -hmm. frankly, we we just had a chemistry when we when we first spoke and and that's then boring. when we met as well. And you know, as much as we uh, we we want to have someone that you know brings in that traditional sports and media ship background it's mm -hmm. it's also finding the right people and people that not only fit what you're doing now but where you're going forward in, in the future as well yeah no. and, and at this stage in my career quite frankly yeah. I want to work with people who I want to work with right? yeah yeah of course and, you're and just and like I'm, I'm done with it. you know what I mean there's so many times in your career in the progression mm -hmm. of your career where you're thrust in situations mm -hmm. that where the chemistry isn't there where yeah. the yeah. environment isn't there where you don't feel comfortable but you do it because because that's what you're, you're that's what it is. Right? That's yeah. what you're supposed it's to do. It's a job, you should take it. Exactly, yeah. but but my attraction to Charlie was what he said. It was the chemistry between us. Mm -hmm. It was it was the alignment, um, and we both want to have fun. Yeah. You know? And he's been having fun, and now it's my turn to share in some of the fun that he's been having. I'm always intrigued. Uh, I want to know your thought process the first time you heard about esports for the first time. Because I always feel like it throws people that work in sports that's a, good a little question. bit off. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so if you're a real, a, a really sharp sports executive, mm. you need to be aware of everything that's going on in the marketplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any opportunity that can disrupt your business, any opportunity that can cannibalize your business, yeah. any opportunity that can complement your business or augment what you're doing. So, I first started taking note of esports 
uh, three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the landscape yeah. and in, in any time that there are this many people participating and where the demographic is millennials, Gen Zs, 35 and under, mm -hmm. you need to be aware of what's happening mm -hmm. with that next generation of fans and that next generation of consumers. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in retail, whether you're in consumer products, or whether you're in any business, mm -hmm. you're looking at that opportunity. So as it, as it continued to evolve, you know, it was organic and now it's becoming more organized. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the organic nature of it, the organization of it now, leads to a tremendous opportunity. So with, uh, just to get it from the perspective of you, with the rebrand that you guys did um, mm -hmm. uh, from Set to Destroy over to Lazarus, was that kind of the same reason, like, okay, things are evolving, we need to, you know, tighten up everything, or, or you just wanted sick New Jerseys? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We well, love the pink. Yeah, we, we love the pink, and yeah. we own the pink within yeah. the industry, and yeah. it, it wasn't more or less to focus on the last 10 years, it's really to focus on the next 50. Yeah. So when we were going through the rebrand, you know, if you look at, you know, the, the polo icon that's on golf jerseys, so, mm -hmm. We have an iconic image, we have an iconic color, we have an iconic, you know, name of our brand and, and you know, our flagship in, in eSports with, with, with Lazarus. And so it wasn't just focusing on the past, but it's really, mm -hmm. you know, what, how are we branding ourselves? How are we, how are we uh, you know, creating that difference uh, as opposed to our competitors within the space? And, and frankly, when we're looking at merchandise and we're looking at branding and marketing and all of those yeah. things combined, you know, we, uh, that, that's how we came to, to Lazarus moving forward. So we get how Lazarus is in play here because obviously we understand how Word, we, e yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. orgs work. But then how does title fit into this? Yeah, well, um, title is kind of the umbrella because mm -hmm. yeah. Lazarus, although that's the competitive side, mm -hmm. there's so many other aspects of, of title because we really are a platform. Okay. We're, we're, we're not just a, a competitive team. And, and Charlie, you want to talk about the, the multi layers of the platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so Title Gaming is a platform company that focuses on, on uh, esports, entertainment, and gaming ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that, that first you know silo, if you will, would be the esports brand, which would be Lazarus Esports, mm -hmm. that focuses on, on uh, uh, open model games like your Fortnite, your PUBG. Anybody can play it, right? Yeah. And then ult ultimately, we're, all, we're always looking at new franchise opportunities. Uh, the second silo or the vertical would be, um, you know, uh, entertainment. So distribution, consumption, merchandising. That's really focusing in on people in an ecosystem. Ex right? Exactly, yeah. and and creating, you know, with with our younger demographic, right? And it's 18 to 35 year olds, and you know, we we both have kids that consume content all the time, yeah. right? So great, great students, great kids, but they're they're, they're enabled to play games and, and consume that content. So that's really that focuses on that second vertical for us. Mm -hmm. And then the third vertical is really, you know, the you know the infrastructure and the, the gaming ecosystem. And that's us focusing on tech, IP creation, mm -hmm. real estate, live events, and, and auxiliary services that really, you know, round out what we're doing at Title Gaming and frankly what separates us from, from our competitors as well. Now, uh, here's something that's been a, a real big hot topic uh, in esports. You know, all of us uh, fans of esports have been like, oh, there's talks about Olympics. And I know you've dealt a, lo a lot with that while at CBC. Right. So can you guys kind of give us just a, a vision that you see in your mind, or at least even from that side, how they view esports mm -hmm. and what kind of possibility there is uh, with those two coming together? You know, I, I think, um you know, as from a broadcaster standpoint, mm -hmm. whether it's NBC or CBC or mm -hmm. whoever those rights holders are, we're always trying to engage that next generation, yeah. the younger fan, and get them involved in the Olympics. And one of the things that you have to look at is what's exciting and, and, and what's interesting mm -hmm. to the fan, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yep. we talked about yeah, we that talked a little earlier, yeah. right? You've got to find out what their appetite is and, and what their needs are and what their wants are. So I think when you see that one third of the world's population mm -hmm. is, is into gaming, you've got to pay attention to that. You can't ignore it. Exactly, yeah. so, so I, I think it's coming. I mean, when you think about the Olympics, it's all based on competition yep. and being the best you can be mm -hmm. and, and being better than the next person. Mm -hmm. And because esports is global mm -hmm. by its very nature, it was born globally. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It was so, born as an international so, phenomenon. And, and right? limitless, right? And it's yeah. borderless, yeah. right? And, and you can have teams representing countries, mm -hmm. but yet there's already 
you know, in, interterritorial play. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it, it just makes sense that that's a natural progression because I think esports is an extension of traditional sports, which is one of the reasons why I'm involved. Yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. I, I, no, I was just going to add, like, as you know, um, they they tested it in uh, Pyeongchang mm -hmm. just recently, mm -hmm. and you know, so we're we're very bullish and believe that it's going to be introduced again and in and, 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 and a larger capacity in 2024 and obviously 2028, mm -hmm. and it just seems like that's the natural progression and evolution of where it's heading to. Yeah. Again, I'm a I'm a I'm a Rocket League guy, y'all. You yeah, know yeah, this, course, and, yeah. and like, um, so I'm 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 hoping like one day. That you know? to me <laughs> is the one esport that could really transcend, like really go there. And not not a lot of people could fight it. I get that people still want to say that e game e gamers aren't really e -gamers. athletes. Yeah. Well, because that's what they say, e gamers, right? Because mm -hmm. how yep. how do we justify this then? Because I feel like they are still athletes and they deserve a platform. In my mind's eye, that's what I feel. But I also feel like you speak about the the global thing. You speak about um, you know the audience, but to me, like the Olympics has always been about mm -hmm. money. It's always been about money and advertising dollars and bringing. And when the more eyeballs you get, the more money you get. Of course, right? so it's I a feel business. Like, yeah, exactly. It's so, the business of sport. Exactly. Right? So then, for that reason, we should be having this soon. I feel like esports should be technically at the next Olympics. Well, if you want more viewership, yeah. And if this is where your viewership resides and you mm -hmm. want to bring people in, and it's not just about viewership, but it's about engagement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about, and everybody knows in sport that the more um, opportunity there is to expand your product yeah. and to get that kind of exposure, the more revenue is, is ultimately generated. So, mm -hmm. so, so it is the business of sport as yeah. well, and you, and you can't deny that. But it's also about once again, engagement in, in getting people involved in something that is entertaining. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, you know, esports is is that perfect nexus, that that connectivity between sport and entertainment mm -hmm. and media mm. so, and technology. Now, yeah. uh, we're almost out of time, but I do have uh, one more question just to, to get out there. We see so many different um, styles um, of uh, f formats in uh, eSports. You know, we have uh, franchising, we have those promo relegation, we have just circuit events. A lot of them now are seeming to jump into that franchising, mm -hmm. following along with traditional sports. Um, with that, though, a lot of them are going city-based. They're starting to do, you know, like your Toronto Defiant, you have the Dallas Fuel. Um, with that, though, sometimes you can lose the the original parent org uh, where they're from now is Lazarus, Lazarus sorry being Canadian how important is it to still maintain that image of being a Canadian founded mm -hmm. well as, as much as we were the first in in Canada 10 years ago mm -hmm. you know as much as we're a Canadian a story we're a global brand of course okay. so you know if you look at you know for instance like an optic gaming where you know when they got into overwatch they had to, to rebrand to to the outlaws but there's still a lot of connections there in terms of the color the branding mm -hmm. the identification and so once again we, we have a a great fan base we have a, a, a great connection with our fans that that not only follow just you know singular teams or players that we have or influencers but they connect and and ideally love our brand mm -hmm. so if we were to you know move into a franchise into a specific region or city that is in Canada or outside of Canada mm -hmm. we have that that great brand loyalty because we have true engagement with our fran uh, with our fans so you're not from afraid top to of a city name basically absorbing no. Lazarus mm -hmm. and no. just knowing that you're a part of it is still something special, of course right? smart yeah. as you said it esports is a global thing and That's if you right. ignore that then you're ignoring the thing everything <laughs> right. gentlemen uh, where can people find more about title about Lazarus yeah, so you can find us at title.gg, and uh, it's a throwback. It, it, title is spelt with two eyes. Yeah. So you can probably remember going back several years before there was Discord and TeamSpeak mm -hmm. that, you know, if you wanted to get invited to a game, you had to say I I. So send me <laughs> send me an invite. So Roots. it's title with two eyes, title.gg, uh, and then you can find us on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. And with Lazarus, you can find us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all across the spectrum. Go, yeah. Gentlemen, Jeffrey, Charlie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure.